another great pepperoni pizza mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> That's how you know it's good, honestly. <laughs> That's how you know. If you want restaurant quality pizza at home, that beautiful, tender, pillowy crust, you need a really hot oven. I'm talking upwards of 700 degrees. One option is to preheat a baking stone or steel in your home oven, but that takes an hour and it's limited by your oven. It can only get as hot as 500 or 550 degrees. If you're serious about homemade pizza, you might want to invest in one of these indoor pizza ovens. Our two ATK recommended models make incredible restaurant quality pizza. So what's the catch? Both of these cost upwards of a thousand dollars. Today we're going to compare these two pizza beasts, the Univolt and the Breville Pizziolo in a head-to-head -head competition. For those of you who do want to spend thousand dollars on an excellent pizza oven, and for everyone else who's just curious. Today it's the battle of the thousand dollar pizza ovens. Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> We've tested tons of pizza ovens over the years. We have some great outdoor options, but until recently the indoor options have been, in a word, terrible. That is, until the Breville Pizzaiolo came along. This was a game changer for getting the temperatures you need to make excellent pizza on a countertop. That's part of why these are so expensive. To get up to seven to 800 degrees on a countertop, you need a certain set of mechanics. Now recently, the Uni Volt launched in direct competition. Uni makes several of our ATK recommended outdoor pizza ovens, and now they're coming inside to challenge the Breville. They're both electric, Uni is cleverly marketing theirs as the first indoor-outdoor model, but you can use both of them indoors and outdoors, you just need to store them inside. Kate's team Uni, Lisa's team Breville, I'm just team pizza. In testing, we rated these machines on a bunch of different factors. Performance, ease of use, size, and versatility. Let's start with performance, which we defined as how quickly the ovens reached their temperature, the temperature they reached, and how good the pizza was. We tested these with all different kinds of pizzas, but our baseline was a thin crust pizza. So today, everything we're talking about is in relation to a thin crust pizza. So Kate, how did the uni perform? The uni performed really well. Its maximum temperature is 850 degrees, and when we tested it, it really gets up to that temperature. And it does it in just about 20 minutes. And Which is compared to like an hour in a home oven for a steel to get hot enough? Exactly. So a fraction of the time. And then once it's at that temperature, it cooks the pizza in four or five minutes. Lisa, how'd the Breville do on performance? The Breville also did well. Just like the Uni, it can preheat in 20 minutes. It gets to 750 degrees, not 850. But it also cooks a pizza in four to five minutes. So a hundred degree difference between the two, was there a difference in the pizza with a hotter oven? Great question. So it sounds like a huge difference, but what we found is the pizzas from both were awesome. So it's really about the difference between a home oven, which is 500 degrees to 750, like the Breville is huge. But once you move from 750 to 850, that hundred degree difference doesn't matter as much as you think it would. The pizzas were both really, really good. So compared to a home oven, these blew our minds. A hundred degrees difference between them, not that big of a deal. In the spirit of a little friendly competition, let's make some pizza. Ladies, let her rip. Excellent launching. Remember, the peel smells the fear. Just let her rip. I can see that one rising in real time. Pizzas are in, we'll see you all in four to five minutes. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Mine's a little scorchy looking. Yeah, we right. This is in a little longer, so you can see. That's Lisa's style. This is our ATK recommended pizza cutter by Mercer Culinary. It has a nice tall wheel, so it doesn't get into the, um, the, the toppings. All right, let's try these. We each have a piece of the uni and the breville. Let's try the uni first. All right, okay. It's really good. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Mm -hmm. Tender, mm -hmm. chewy, crispy on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crispy on the bottom without being burnt or too mm -hmm. crackery. Mm -hmm. And it's not too doughy. It's perfectly cooked. The side of the crust, it's it's nicely risen. It's nice and uh, crispy on the bottom. Mm -hmm. You try the Breville? Yes. Let's do it. It's another great pepperoni pizza mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> That's how you know it's good, honestly. <laughs> That's how you know. Mm -hmm. What does everyone think? Okay, 
first thing, homemade pizza can be so good. Yes. I think like these two batches, I like the uni. Yeah. A little softer, a little more pillowy. I like the crispier crust on the breville, but I think they both are terrific pizza. They're beautiful, well cooked, nice and browned. Really, you know, did a beautiful job with this great tear and you know, look at that. It's just so good. Yeah, this is really what we saw in testing. As far as performance and the pizza they make, they really were tied. These are both excellent. You can personalize it. You'll notice this one's a little darker. This pizza actually doesn't quite get as hot. This one gets hotter. It was just slight differences in the cooking of these pizzas, but they're both fantastic. Although it's great that they get super, super hot, you don't always have to crank them to their max temperature. It really depends on the style of pizza you're making. So for this one, the thin crust, we actually had this set to 650, not 850, which is as high as it can go. 850 is really when you're making like a Neapolitan style pizza, a style that's meant to cook super fast, really high temperatures, it gets really pillowy, it's super light. For other styles of pizza, you can go a little lower on temperature. Generally speaking, the thicker the crust, the lower the temperature, and the longer the pizza is going to take to cook. So the first round, performance, a draw. Next up, ease of use. So ease of use for us with these pizza ovens meant their control panels and any accessories they came with. Kate, how'd the uni stack up here? The uni was good. It has three simple dials, which you can use to control everything. One's a timer, one does the temperature, and one helps you control the darkness of the pizza. So you can shift the balance between the heat on the bottom and the heat up top, which is nice for customization. Another thing we really liked about the uni is that it has indicator lights and a built-in timer. So that means that as the timer is counting down, also as the oven is preheating, you can tell just at a glance how close your pizza is to being done and how hot your oven is. One downside, however, is that this oven doesn't come with any accessories. For $1,000, that is honestly a bit of a bummer. The oven is too narrow to use one of our standard ATK recommended pizza peels, so you have to buy one separately. Uni does sell a lot, so they're easy to find and they're pretty good quality, but the fact that you're spending this much money and then you have to go ahead and buy an accessory is a disappointment. All right, so great controls, no freebies. Lisa, how'd the Breville stack up? This was also very easy to use, and it has really intuitive controls. We have the timer, we have a style. You can choose New York style, thin crust, you know, pan pizza, frozen pizza. It also has darkness controls, light and dark. I would be way over on the dark side, like real crispy crust. Me too. And if you want to make those controls different, they give you a magnet that goes right on top of these. And if you didn't like those, you can do your top temperature and your deck temperature. The deck is the pizza stone, the top is the top element, and then it's top control, even heat, crust only. You can adjust everything on this, and it even gives you a completely different set of controls to get exactly what you want. Like the uni, it counts down, it tells you the temperatures, and you do really get a lot of control over what's happening in that oven. And it came with a peel that fits. We were a little split on this, right? Like it's great for rotating and removing pizzas, but it's a little sticky for launching them into the oven. We yeah, like wood for that. Definitely. Wood is a little bit better for getting them in, but this is fine for getting them out. Last, it comes with this carbon steel pan with a removable handle, so you can make pan pizza and it fits right inside there. You can roast vegetables. Once you get it in there, you take this off and you can close the door. It's just a nice little extra and for a pizza oven that costs the same as the uni, more or less, you're getting a lot more with it. So they were both really easy to use as far as controls, indicator lights, temperature settings, etc. But a slight win here for the Breville because he came with a couple extra accessories that we appreciated. Next up, size. And we defined this as the external dimensions and the weight. And this is important because either you're going to be taking up a lot of counter space or you're going to be lugging these things in and out of storage somewhere. So Kate, how did the uni stack up as far as size? I'll be honest, the uni is really big. It's about 24 inches long, which is about the average depth of a kitchen countertop, so this won't fit in every kitchen. The other thing is that these need room for ventilation, about six inches on the sides and behind the oven, so you also can't just push it all the way against the wall either. And then finally, this oven is heavy. It's about 40 pounds. So on the days that you're lifting it, you're carrying it, you are going to notice that it's pretty heavy. Lisa, how'd the Breville do as far as size? The Breville 
is much more compact and it's much lighter. She's all excited because she wins this round. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, this is like almost six inches shorter in depth and it weighs just under 30 pounds. It's 29.6 or something. So it's much easier to move around and it takes up much less space in your kitchen. So we've got two slight wins at this point for the Breville. Extra accessories, a little easier to move around. Now let's talk versatility. So versatility in our testing really came down to the interior of the machines, the dimensions inside and the stones they use. Kate, how did the Uni do? Well, let's take a look inside. So this has a square cordierite baking stone, which is actually really similar to the stones that we recommend for a home oven. It's 13 and a quarter inches in both directions. And something that's great about it is that it's square. I know you might think round pizza, round stone, that makes sense. Actually, that's not what we prefer. We like a square stone because that gives you a little bit more wiggle room. When you're launching a pizza, you have a little margin of error as opposed to a round stone where you really have to just land it perfectly. All right, Lisa, how did the Breville do as far as versatility? Okay, well, the Breville has a round stone and it's 11 and 3 quarters inches in diameter. So it's a little small. So our ATK thin crust pizza recipe makes two 13 inch pies. And when we're going to make it in this oven, we have to make three smaller ones. So the stone is also corderite, which is what a ceramic pizza stone is generally made of. And it has a little bit of a metal backsplash here that just follows the curve of that stone. So you can't really push it over and past the stone, but that round shape is a little bit limiting. You do have to land it on the stone and it's a little small. I'm calling this one a win for the uni. It's a little bigger inside. The pizza stone is a little bit bigger. We just love that extra margin of error it gives us and it makes it slightly more versatile. All right, so who won in the end? It depends on what your needs are. Now bear with me here. The Breville is smaller and easier to handle and move around and place in your kitchen or storage. The Volt, while it is bigger, you get something for that. You get more space inside, you get that big, beautiful rectangular stone, which gives you a little bit of wiggle room for landing things and allows you to do slightly bigger pizzas. So in the end, it really depends on what your needs are. We're even split among us. Lisa, what would you take? I kind of like the compact size of this one, and I think that I can work with that slightly smaller stone. I personally like the bigger interior dimensions here. I like that bigger stone. I like the wiggle room. Kate, what about you? I was going to say that I'd be Team Uni, but honestly, I would take either one. Good answer. Right now, as we're filming, these are about $1,000 each, but let the price wars begin. We know they're going to happen. They're happening right now, and new models are entering the market. We've seen several around the $400, $500 mark, but these come with lower peak temperatures, so they might only hit 500 degrees or 600 degrees. You know we'll be testing the heck out of these new models, and in the meantime, these are both great. If one is cheaper, go for that one. If you want a smaller model, go for the Breville. If you want a little more wiggle room, go for the Uni. For more information on all the gear we talked about today, check out the links below or go to americastestkitchen.com. Yeah, and what do you think? Are these things worth a thousand bucks? Would you get one? What's your favorite pizza topping? Let us know in the comments. Make sure to like this video and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode.